Good evening, you're watching the Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Will Bush pursue the press for the CIA and NSA leaks? The NSA leak is the leak, of course, about the warrantless telephone tapping by the Bush administration. The CIA leak is the story by the Washington Post about prison camps in Europe. Both leaks, and we're here to discuss it tonight with Lucy Douglas. Thank you very much for coming by. You're welcome, Jim. Executive Director of Reporters. What is it called? The Reporters Committee for Freedom oh, of the I Press. Oh, I know what it is. And Susan Buckley of Cahill Gordon. Jim, how are you? A press lawyer. Thank you for coming by. Okay, so let's talk about each of these. You're from Washington. Yes. The Washington Post ran a story on prison camps. Was this a whistleblower case? I think it was. Okay. Uh, I think this is a fairly classic example of uh, someone in the government uh, saying that, you know, the, the public should be informed about what's going on with these operations. These prisons are being operated in Eastern Europe. And I think it was a good story. I think uh, both of the stories you mentioned uh, in your introduction are whistleblower cases. They're classic whistleblower cases. Let's talk, um, uh, I want to talk to Susan about the other one for, for a second and compare it with the one you're familiar with particularly. Uh, was there a crime that the CIA committed here as I, such? I don't know that we know we what know. The, if the CIA <laughs> committed a crime or not. Yeah. I mean, everything the CIA does is uh, cloaked in secrecy. Um, we really don't know a lot about the operations. It, it may, it may not. I don't I think that's you can't the issue. Make, you suppose you can't make people disappear. Uh, one would think. <laughs> but we seem to have been doing a lot of that right. lately. Okay, Susan, on the uh, NSA leak case, is that oh. a whistleblower case? Uh, as Lucy said, classic whistleblower case. A uh, government employee or employees coming forward to um, give to the press information about misdeeds and misconduct by the administration. Classic okay. whistleblower. And was it a crime? Not a, uh, when I say it is a crime, it's a little confusing. Was the whistle blown about a crime? In other words, did the um, NSA, did the Bush administration break the law when it did warrantless uh, wiretapping without going to what is known as the FISA court. Was that, did that break the law? I think there's no doubt. No doubt that it broke that the it law. That it broke the law. Uh, and all the pieces of information that you can get your hands on from the administration defending the actions are just not persuasive. Uh, the structure of the statute, um, what the president had in hand under FISA to begin with, what he got as a result of the Patriot Act is all incredibly inconsistent with the view that the administration is now propounding which is that he has the inherent power to do that and had even additional power under the authorization for the use of military force. Well, now, uh, <clears throat> is this a better whistleblowing case to the extent that when you blow a whistle about a crime, it's better than blowing something that's uh, maybe or maybe not a crime? you have any judgmental value on that in terms of well, your perspective? I don't want, I mean, there are whistleblowings about well. something that's more important than another, for sure. The fact that the President of the United States authorized a program which, in my view, and uh, in, in a legitimate view, I believe, uh, unconstitutional and inappropriate, is certainly very important. There, I mean, there have been other important whistle blowings, but this is a big one. Okay, now, this, this case, well, let me ask you this, and we'll ask uh, Susan, who's an expert on the arcane law about which we don't want to be too particular here, called the espionage act. She's one of the only experts, yeah, as a matter of fact. The only one who understands, <laughs> but okay, it's never been uh, tested, really. Uh, in, can I call it, Susan's case. Yes. You got your case and Susan got All her right. case. In Susan's case, do we have a situation where perhaps the government can actually go after the press? That's something we're worried about. And how would that happen? Well, th I think they would dig up various um, ex uh, uh, indictment. They would try to indict under various portions of the Espionage Act. They would try to demonstrate that there was some sort of willful release of classified information. And um, that, as Judge Ellis in the uh, Eastern District of Virginia said the other day from, from the bench in the APAC case, where Larry Fl uh, Mr. Franklin pled guilty the other day, he said, from the bench, anybody who receives classified information, whether they be a historian, a scholar, an academic, or a journalist, is breaking the law. Now, if there are people out there who take that view, 
that that is breaking the law. Um, and uh, there's a tension there between getting information to the public and trying to safeguard classified information. If there was ever going to be an administration that was going to charge something under the Espionage Act, this is the I'd one. say this is the one. Okay, now, let's go back. There's a special section here, Susan, that uh, didn't exist, uh, doesn't exist in any other cases we ever thought about before, generally speaking, as members of the public. And that's the section she just talked about where you buy. You can get the press, apparently, because how does it work without being too arcane? Does it cover classified information? Well, we'll start with classified information. It, it is not a crime to leak classified information. It's not, not a, a crime to cl no. leak classified well, it everything, is a crime every, everything I read says it's a crime to leak classified no, it is information. A, it it's is a not, crime to leak it, it, some kinds of classified information. But not classified? No. Well, no. I, I hear everybody, Judge Ellis said, everybody said, Judge Ellis tripled the sentence of somebody who was uh, being sentenced, and that was uh, a few days ago. In the Franklin case. Yeah. No, it is not a crime to leak classified information. It is a crime to leak certain kinds of classified information. In the Franklin case, uh, in the Pentagon Papers case, uh, the classic statute that the government uh, ran to uh, was part of the Espionage Act, Section 793 basically says that it is a crime to leak, to disclose classified information relating to the national okay, defense. Okay, so, so we'll just take you there for the moment. It's not a crime to leak classified information, but it is a crime to leak certain types of classified information Correct. about code making. Is that what happens? How well, does that work? There's another statute. That's section 798. And no one's, this is the one that's out of the blue. No one, this is the one everyone's talking about now. now. Everyone's talking. The bloggers are saying, put the New York Times in jail. It violated 798. 798 was a statute passed shortly after the Second World War. And the goal of this statute was to protect the United States' ability to, and the methodology for breaking codes, diplomatic codes. There had been a number of events leading up to World War II and in the midst of World War II where the United States code cracking ability was very important. We broke Japanese military codes, uh, which was partly the success of the Battle of Midway. Congress was very concerned about codes and our ability to crack them and how we did it and passed the statute 798, which says that it is unlawful to disclose information about codes, ciphers, and communications intelligence activities. Well, no, it, it's unlawful to disclose classified information about communications intelligence. Well, didn't Hayden do that? Recently, General Hayden got up and he said, I'm going to explain the reason why the Bush administration hasn't broken the law. But didn't he break the law by the way the law is written? Well, he disclosed would, classified and he told how the whole telephone system worked. I would say no. Oh, you say no? I would say no because that's not what the statute was designed to do. Oh, but the statute covers everything. I would say no. I would, is it the word authorized in there somewhere? And wouldn't he have been authorized? Well, that's, that's another defense he would have. But yeah. assuming that but he was look, just but speaking everybody, generally. But isn't true that publication about communications intelligence happens all the time? Absolutely. Of course it does. And if you read the statute to be that broad, it would be unconstitutional in my view. All right. So let, let's, come, let's come back to this mm -hmm. and see uh, what, uh, the Bush, whether the Bush administration is actually going to bring these cases because it's a political question. We have our Washington expert. We have our media expert here, informed by your uh, legal judgment. So let's now let's ask ourselves, how do we get to the point where we actually know the government is going to go forward with these cases? Will there be an, will there be an investigation? And is there already an investigation well, we, with these two, with the two leak stories here? We know that the, the NSA eavesdropping story is being investigated because Ooh. the National Security Agency has asked the Justice Department to investigate right. it. And that was announced about two weeks ago. Have you heard anything here in Washington about uh, actually anything going on? Yeah, they are starting to talk to people, really? but they're like, talking to people within the government at this point. They're trying to focus on right. actual employees. I wouldn't expect any subpoenas of reporters well, uh, to second. go out for a while. Okay, let's just stop there. They did do an investigation. Yes. Now, if they were, uh, in the NSA case, able to find all the people 
who leaked it, that's mm -hmm. the end of it, right? You don't, we don't get to any major confrontation of pursuing the press. See, there's the funny thing about asking government employees whether or not they were the leaker. They tend to say no. Well, but if they say yes, then it's all over, well, then, right? Well, theoretically, it should be. All right, so now what, what, hap now what happens in, the, uh, in her case? You have to talk about her case, which is the prison camp case. Uh, right now, we don't know if there is an investigation going on uh, about the source of the leak for that Washington Post story. Uh, there's been nothing said. There could be. There there's nothing not be. officially that's been said, but folks at the Washington Post have said. Has the CIA CI asked uh, for an or for, no. for an, I don't know. We don't. You don't know. I don't know if they've officially asked or not. All right. So now let's go back to our scenario. We have an investigation, and what what happens is what you think is going to happen. Employees have a way of not saying mm -hmm. they leaked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, ordinarily, what happens? Do we go get a grand jury? Um, oftentimes, yes. That's what I would anticipate would happen. They would ha call a grand jury. They would bring in all of these employees, have them say that, yes, I was the leaker, or no, I right. wasn't, or I have information. They would take the information they had, try to decide whether or not the law was broken, uh, and then probably go and demonstrate to a judge or try to demonstrate to a judge that they've exhausted all of the other sources and that they need the reporters to tell them who the leakers were before they can be absolutely certain that oh, something All right, and this, and this would happen in, in uh, the other case, too. It happened in both, both cases, that uh, you, got, you got a grand jury, you got a subpoena, and, uh, and we're off and running, and we try to, and we try, try to get reporters. Could be, um, and we may see again, as we saw in the Plame investigation, the government trying to use these forms uh, mm -hmm. to get... What do you mean by these forms? Well, there's, there were forms that uh, the Justice Department uh, and the White House asked all of the employees being investigated in Plame as right. to whether they leaked the information about Ms. Plame to sign a form waiving any confidentiality rights they had vis-a-vis -a, -vis a reporter. And uh, Patrick Fitzgerald, the special counsel there, urged to the courts that because the government employees had signed this waiver, that the reporters wouldn't have any privilege, even if one existed. Okay, so now uh, we're back on the Judy Miller track, except in, if I could call it your case, which is this fancy 798 NSA leak case. Uh, if, in fact, the government thinks publication has been a crime, they would investigate that. How in God's name would they do that, I wonder? Well, they've never done that. It's um, never happened. The, in fact, the, the only case, I think the only case um, that has ever sort of uh, be would be comparable to this one is the Japanese code case that you described. Do you know what, that, what happened there? Chicago Tribune published a Japanese code. Jury was convened. It didn't convict. Japanese never knew the code. The, the Correct. The, the Navy decided the ultimately not to pursue the case the, the because, code. <laughs> because they didn't want the Japanese. The Japanese didn't know. Didn't know. No. It was the headlines the Japanese didn't know. And anyway, okay, so now, now we're in Judy Miller land, okay? okay. Now, in, uh, is this case like Judy Miller? I mean, there are certainly some similarities and some major differences. Um, the well, let me ask first, just, uh, <laughs> at the, I'm sorry, off the, off the top, because I remember I did an interview on uh, NPR, and I, I forgot the, the the basic difference is that we uh, Judy Miller wasn't a whistleblowing case, was it? What was uh, it? Well, it? you know, someone in the White House theoretically may have thought they were a whistleblower, but I think the Miller case clearly can be described as a political case. Someone was trying to manipulate or spin a story that was out there. It was not a classic whistleblower case. I think these two stories are much more of your classic example of government employees thinking something wrong was going on and wanting to bring it to the public's attention so that, you know, theoretically, the public could make its approval or displeasure known yeah. so that we're not at least blinded right. now, by just all of this. Very simple case. They're both cases, the way we've hypothesized them, and we've got a, another one, in fact, where a reporter doesn't want to disclose sources. So they're the same mm -hmm. that way. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, you you would agree that this is different than the Miller case, wouldn't you? Well, certainly the uh, the the goals and the motives of the government employee providing the information to the journalist makes it very different. Also, remember in Miller, Judy Miller never wrote an article uh, about the information that she learned. Uh, the Times never published anything. 
uh, but she was uh, part of, wrapped up in that investigation nonetheless. Um, here, obviously, the Times did publish an article, um, but the, the government employee here, employees here, presumably had far different motives uh, that, than what we now believe the White House uh, leakers did in the plane affair. Okay, so now, now in the public eye, it's, as Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again, right? Now, let's just start and uh, think about whether, in fact, it is deja vu all over again. Do you, do you think, first of all, uh, in response to Susan's point, that we're going to have an issue where reporters and their sources are going to go into this conversation whereby the source says, I release you from the pledge and you can go and testify. Do you think that's going to happen in these, ca in you these know, cases? We are, I am hearing anecdotally various bureaus in Washington, news bureaus, are having conversations and it is... What does that mean? It, well, it means that they're sitting down with their reporters and saying, okay, we've got new ground rules here for confidentiality. For one thing, um, before you agree to confidentiality, um, before you make that promise, um, you have to inform your source of, you know, some very pertinent facts. You have to, ha and you have to run it by an editor. It's not as easy to promise confidentiality in most newsrooms these days, um, and, and so that has changed. But reporters are not always in a good position to decide whether someone's a whistleblower or a political hack. In this, in the, in these two cases, though, well, because they are different, as you, as you pointed out. Would you suspect that everyone's going to stand on their sources? I think in the whistleblower, these cases... These two the cases? Uh, yes, I do. No, so that may be I one do. difference right here, Susan, because in the Judy Miller case, there are many reporters, and um, many of them sort of gave up. I mean, you could argue Judy Miller gave up, but that's not totally fair because she was in jail all that time. But there are six other people uh, of some note. Um, People who are on NBC, people who cover Time magazine, and they all threw up their hands. Do you think psychologically that this case is the same as that one because this case is a real whistleblower and those, those cases were not? In terms of, uh, now we're looking at, we're trying to get to the enchilada here. What sort of confrontation we have? Do you think that's going to be a position where the people stick together? Well, maybe we can look at it this way. First of all, I should confess that I was one of Judy Miller's lawyers, so we should have that out there for your viewers to know uh, my particular pers persuasive bent, if you will. But let's look at it this way. In the, in the Miller case, uh, there was, when we got to the D.C. Circuit, there were three judges, and we were urging that a, a new federal common law privilege should be established. And that would protect reporters regardless of whether there is a federal shield law. And one of the judges thought they didn't have to rule on that issue. One thought it was not good. And Judge Tatel the third, adopted a federal common law privilege, uh, which was a very important uh, opinion and a very important development in the confidential and, source and, uh, law. And uh, I want to come back to you on this, and that's why I am sort of want to stop you in the middle. And we're going to want to look at that and see if that is grounds for making a big difference here if we get into a court battle. But before we get to the court battle, let's go back over to reporter land. Okay. Okay. okay? And uh, I want to get the attitude here. I'm trying to imply that the attitude here is going to be different than the previous attitude where everyone was saying, oh, you know, it's not that big a deal because I'm, I'm not a whistleblower. Do you think that the reporters who are involved in this case think of it differently? For example, let's take the New York Times. There may be a lot of people who know that source at the New York Times. That's to say, not only the reporter, but after Judy Miller, not possibly the editor, chief, possibly the publisher. Now, uh, in the Washington Post case, uh, it's such a Washington-type story that uh, people might harden their views. Uh, do you agree with me or not agree with me? I'm trying to suggest that there, people are going to harden their views in this particular instance. You mean uh, reporters are going to harden? Reporters aren't going to think out this time. <laughs> I thought that's what yeah, you were saying. that's what I'm trying to say. They're not going to think out. They're going to stay together, and they're all going to march to the Huskow together. <sighs> yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, let's 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 go back. To, and how does this happen? It happens because they don't want to disclose their sources, and then the public says, 
Because they understand that this is a classic right. example right. of if you think out on your sources right. on something, on a story this important, who's ever going to trust it's the you? Whole thing, the whole thing, we're, we're, we're dead. Your ability to we're collect dead. news so is institutional, gone. Uh, credibility yes. is very much at, at, at stake. Particularly okay, now, reporters who right. cover national security Okay, now we'll, go, now we'll go back to you because I inter interrupt you. So there they go. They're all saying we're ready to go. Well, they don't say that. They, they say we argue the reporter's privilege and uh, for hell and contempt we're going to jail. They whisper to everybody. But, that, but in your world, it's much more polite. <laughs> and, and you're going up and you're being, you know, the lawyer and arguing before the court. And you're going to say, because you've told us, Judge Tatel has come up with something here. Well, Judge Tatel did adopt a test uh, for looking at reporters' privilege cases that uh, he said was flunked in the Miller Cooper case, right. and I believe would prevail in the uh, NSA leak case. Okay, mm -hmm. so now, uh, sorry to keep inter interrupting yes. you, Susan. It's okay. Uh, when you say adopt test, I mean, for those, what, what do you mean by that? Well, basically what Judge Tatel said was that in the national security leak area, it's very hard to decide how you judge whether a reporter should have a shield or not. And basically, Judge Hadle said, well, let's take the importance of the story on the one hand and balance it against uh, the sort of danger of the leak. Um, was, it, was this some, was it about sa troops sailing ships or something like that? Well, that would be very dangerous and perhaps would be t difficult to balance again. But basically, what did we know from this story from the Times? What we know that's new is that American citizens were being spied on without a warrant. That's what we know that's new. Is that, is that a secret that the United States has to keep so close to its vest that it would not balance against the need for the public's right to know that this was happening? I think the public's right to know wins there. Okay, so, so we got a, a different balance. Correct. And you think that uh, based on that, uh, the press might win. The press might but, win. But you know, this her argument depends on the fact that uh, we really got to know that the uh, NSA is wiretapping us without a warrant, and uh, that's really terrible. Recent polls have showed 53% of Americans say that's just, that's just fine. You think the courts are going to agree with Susan? This is really something we had to know? Yes. Oh, you do? Why? Yes, I do. I, because I think, uh, I, I think, luckily for us, federal judges understand the importance of a free press better than a lot of average citizens. Right. Um, and they, they believe in it in the abstract, but I think federal judges understand how the system works. But these are better. the same judges that put Miller in the Huskow. Well, and uh, they're not, uh, how do you describe it? But they were it? not using the test that Tatel advocated. I really, uh, I, I think well, there's you, a you lot You have of to assume they're going to uh, say Tatel's really got it. Tatel's a liberal. All these other people aren't liberals. That's how many, true. How many liberals are on the court we're talking about here? Is it Who's a left? Well, Is it a conservative three? or a liberal court It depends court on what court we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're in the same court that Tatel is in. Because we're, we're thinking, hey, we've got this crisis going again. It's going to be just like Miller. Miller is in that court. In come all the reporters in this case. So they're there. And, uh, you, you, were, you were at that court. I was. Maybe you don't want to talk about it. Because, uh, <laughs> maybe, you want to, maybe, you maybe you don't want to talk about it because you'll be there again. I was there. What, yeah, well, what do you, what do you think? Do you think is it a conservative liberal court when you add it all together? Oh, it, it's, it's definitely gotten more conservative. And you think this conservative court is going to... Uh, uh, do exactly what uh, Susan says. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's so complicated, but, uh, you know, I would... Um, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I agree okay, with Susan. Yes or no? Okay, I now. Agree with Susan. Okay, so now we won that case, right? Okay, I'll yeah. take it. Now, okay, now we got this other case. You know, we still can sue those who published the leaks from the NSA because there's this statute that says you can actually get them, whereas, you know, the law isn't so clear. Now, what happens here if, they, if that case is brought? Uh, the NSA case is going to be brought against who? Yeah. Well, I don't want to say it, but the New York Times. Ah. Oh. Well, that, you, would, uh, that, that would be extraordinary, Jimmy. Be extraordinary. Really. But who would win? Well, the New York Times would win. All right, the case. now, okay, we got, now this is the legal, this is our legal conclusion that you think we've got two winners with these cases. Okay? That's what you both said. Oh. All right, now, informed by that legal judgment, will. Bush pursue the press. Now, let's think of the politics and anything mm -hmm. else. 
Michael, you want to start? Well, I think that this is where politics and the law collide head on because, as you know, um, there's very little law to rely on here. Um, but I think if there ever was an administration that was going to pursue the, uh, the media for publishing a leak, this would be the one. But the question is, what is the political risk you take for publishing uh, for prosecuting someone who has published truthful information about misdeeds the governor, government has engaged in. And that's the purpose of the First Amendment right there. Yeah, we want to make it possible for the media to publish information right. about the actions of government. All right, now can I move on to yes. Susan and make fun of your answer just a okay, little bit? Okay, go right ahead. This is, this is an answer you would expect for the executive director for the Reporters Committee for Freedom I'm of the Press. I'm glad I'm so predictable in which uh, she asserts absolutely properly that the First Amendment values shared by that community, and I suppose everyone around this table, are accepted nationwide as a political matter. And therefore, if the Bush administration goes against those interests, it's not in its political interest. Now, what's your view on that in light of the fact that 53% of those people out there think that we ought to be wiretapping our citizens without a warrant. Is she right, politically speaking? I think she is right. I, I think you know, back in the Pentagon Papers case, a case that is dear to your heart, I know, um, in the opinions uh, by some of the members of the Supreme Court, they suggested that the Times could be prosecuted. And in his book, Whitney North Seymour suggested that after the uh, Pentagon Papers decision came down that the Nixon administration sent emissaries to the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York to see if they would prosecute the Times. And Seymour apparently answered, not in my district. Well, but those are the good old days. When you, <laughs> those are the good old days when you had U.S. attorneys who are going to stand up to the... So you think a U.S. attorney, when asked to to prosecute. Of course, this would be in uh, Washington, though, wouldn't it? Susan? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know where it would be. More, more, most likely in Washington. Most likely most in Washington. Likely. Yeah. yeah. Most likely in Washington. So, uh, guess what? We've come to the end. And so there, I want to ask you something. What? Will Bush pursue the press for the CIA and NSA leaks? I Your think, answer. Uh, yes, but I don't know how far he's going to get. Yes, but I don't know how far he's going to get. What does that mean? He'll, he's going to lose. Try. He'll try. He'll try, but he'll lose? He'll try, but he'll lose. So we have a big case there, then. Thank you very much for coming by. Right. Susan, your judgment, please. I don't think he'll do it. You don't think he's even going to try? I don't think he'll try to prosecute the press. I don't. Susan Buckley. He would be wise not to, Jim. Right. Thank, <laughs> thank you for stopping by. Take care. And thank you for stopping by. And come back next week to learn more about the digital age. And I am James Goodale for Digital. I can't say that word. How do we say? It? For the, the Digital Age. Good night. <laughs>